Monday, Monday, Monday. It's Macintosh Monday. Time for some reassembly. Now, this has been sitting out in the garage for a couple of months. Been taking my sweet time building this thing, or, you know, repairing it. So now it's time to put it back together. There's a little bit of dust in the corner I'd like to get out. Good enough. All right, now, it's just a matter of set the motherboard back down in there. drop it back into place for the most part. back in place. And we even got the power LED pointed in the right place. Let's see, all of these are clear. The uh, audio jack was actually covered previously. Power button, which isn't going to work initially because I've got to either invert the circuit externally or change some circuitry on the motherboard. Which is kind of where I'm leaning. I mean, it's a little invasive to go in there and change the circuitry on the motherboard, but it's also a lot cleaner because you'd almost never notice that I even did it. And I wonder what I did with the screw for that. Start grabbing plastic pieces that help parts of this computer. We've not had a chance to uh, go through and dust the uh, drive yet, so we need to do that still. I think I'll turn off the camera for a minute, pump up my air compressor and do it. All right, got all the dust blown out of the floppy drive. Got, I think this is the housing that the floppy goes into. Um, let's see, I've got this notch here and I've got an exit for the cable, so I think it goes in like this. Got these two teeth, or screws that are gonna act like teeth. And I've got notches in the casing here, so. There we go. Floppy is back in place. It gets power and data through this tiny little cable. Obviously far more serial than the PCs we're using at the time. And I've got the SCSI hard drive. And I've got a couple other little cables over here. And I don't have a whole lot of faith that the SCSI hard drive is going to stay working. So I'm gonna be pulling it back out here shortly. Alright, up here we've got this light pipe for uh, apparently the hard drive activity light. So that's going to end up right here. The hard drive has this bracket on the side. So I guess it just kind of clicks into place. Yeah, there we go. It's been a couple of months since I took this apart, so I'm already forgetting how it came apart. Got these little teeth that lock in on the sides here. Hmm. In fact, I'm gonna, going to pull the drive back out and bend this. This one seems uh, bent inward a little bit too much. There we go. Now, let's try this again. There we go. Now they both clicked in, both sides. Hard drive's in there pretty securely. It is a 40 megabyte. I've got a ground lead here, but I don't think it used that. So, before I put this in place, let's see what else I need. I've got a speaker. I definitely want a speaker. It's got a lot of dust on the back, so. I'm gonna blow that by hand because I don't want to pop the speaker. Now, there's a speaker jack on the motherboard right down here. I'm 
I don't remember. Okay, we'll worry about the speaker next. I think the drive does go in now. Well, before I put the drive in, I need to put in the SCSI cable. It appears to go like this because it's got yeah, alignment pins that need to go in a certain orientation. And then I've got power for the drive. And I've got power to the drive. There we go. Now, we're going to be covering where the Okay, I see on the side of the case there's a notch for this and a slot for that, so... What have I got? Oh, okay, this screw that holds the motherboard still actually goes in through this, so I'm going to pull this back out. I'd already found a screw and stuck it in there, and I think it's going to take a slightly longer screw, so I've got plenty to choose from. Since I'm pretty sure I've long since managed to lose that little screw. Not the most organized. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the floppy drive now. plug in the floppy drive up here afterwards. All right, I think everybody's in place. There we go, forward and click. Put the LED in here. I'd love to swap this out with a better LED, more modern. <laughs> Promise not to put blue in there, but uh, something that's you know high intensity would be great. Drive data and power. There we go. The power and ground for the drive can tuck in down underneath, so it's out of sight. A little bit of cable management. And SCSI cable. There we go, SCSI cable. I got the floppy cable. There's the power. I'm trying to figure out where this thing goes. Don't recall. Okay, let's do the power supply. It just kind of slots down. Oh yeah, nice and easy. There we go, power supply is in place. Speaker has to be in this area because this is where the jack for it is. I'm thinking it goes in something like this. No, well, because I keep running into the motherboard. Oh, I'm going to have to review the footage from when I took this thing apart to figure out where the speaker goes. But that's why I've got the footage of taking it apart. Just to see how to put it back together. Let's put the RAM back in. I had it all stacked up in the order it came out. But it seems to have fallen over. Okay. Because one thing I remember about this RAM is I believe this RAM works in pairs. So you kind of want to put it back in the same order it was in previously. I have no idea how much RAM this is. Plastic RAM slots are such crap. They don't age well. And they don't hold well. This one RAM stick doesn't match any of the others. In fact, I've, I've got all sorts of different RAM. I got two that are matched Samsung. I've got a, a third Samsung that's matched with a Century. I've got three that looks like it came with this machine. And then this one that doesn't match any of them. <clears throat> So maybe these are not working in pairs. 
or somebody just tossed some ram in here after it had died and I'm gonna find out the hard way how bad this ram is. Okay, I figured out how the speaker goes back in. It's just kind of wedged in place, really. That's interesting. Maybe it should have gone in before the motherboard. I don't, I don't think it could, actually, because the motherboard slides back. So it is what it is. I hook up a speaker now. Speaker's all hooked up. So this thing just kind of tucked under the motherboard and then rocked back. And there's that. Now it seems like these things have an optional reset button and uh, EEPROM switch or something like that. Uh, yeah, reset and NMI. Norm some of these I've seen on eBay have the buttons and some of them don't. This one didn't. I probably would have liked to have bought the one that did, but oh well. So I still don't have the motherboard properly screwed down. And uh, so... It is what it is. I, I just don't have a screw with that thread pitch that long. All the ones that I have that are longer have a much finer thread pitch. So, kind of leaves me hanging. If I ever stick an expansion slot in here, that'll definitely hold the motherboard still. I think the motherboard's pretty well held still with the power supply being installed, so I won't stress it too much. So we're ready to put it together and see if it works. Give it power. It should power right up. And uh, we'll see if it beeps. See what kind of beeps it makes. All right, there's an old 14 inch LCD that I've got laying around. I think it's 1024 by 768 at best. I have no idea if it's gonna work. As I understand it, the refresh rates this thing puts out can be really problematic. I've got three other crappy LCDs I can try, maybe even four. So this will be the one I start with. Got this little adapter. It's going to go from the DB15 to the VGA and a bunch of dip switches. So I'm going to see what, what I need to do to make this work. So <clears throat> I don't know. I think I'm going to be trying a lot of these before I get uh, a lot of the different modes before I finally get the monitor to light up. But let's see if we get some beeping and who knows, maybe I'll get lucky on the first try. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Nothing. It is not powering on. All right, lesson learned. I should have powered this up on the bench and made sure it actually worked. It was a simple fix. Um, so the problem was a simple fix. Um, I noticed on the ATX connector there was a brown wire paired up with an orange wire right at the connector. Well, I left that brown wire floating. Turns out that brown wire needs to see the 3.3 volts on the orange wire to let the power supply know that the power is all good. Otherwise it goes, oh crap, there's a serious problem and shuts itself off. So that's what had happened. We are now going to go back into the case, back into the motherboard, and we'll resume where we were. Click in power and see if this thing comes up. Chime, green light. Now we just need video. So we're not getting any video. It's not terribly surprising. I wonder if I just start flipping switches while it's on and see if I get lucky. So we see a solid light on the hard drive. Probably not a good sign. And uh, I'm not hearing any hard drive activity, actually. I think it's working. The hard drive was flickering. In fact, it's still flickering. If you keep hearing uh, hard drive accessing, it's behind the camera, actually. Um, it's for the Xbox. This hard drive isn't even spinning, which is unfortunate. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it open see what I can do about getting that drive to spin up. Let's just go for broke and pop it open. It's 
smooth like it's an eight. Let's see what I can do without getting it off. No, I'm gonna need pliers or something, I don't know. Hmm. I have no idea what this goes to. Oh, there we go, I got it loose. I'm gonna head alignment and I've already screwed it up. I got dust all over the platter. All right. Give that a little turn. Should go this way, I think. I don't know. The platter looks all scratched up on top, but I don't see a head up here either. Ta da! Booting. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. Let's go ahead and put this nut back on here. I think this is the pivot point for the heads. May have been pretty bad to power it up without that on there. I may have just crashed the heads, but it seemed to be booting, so. Sucks that I got dust in there this the moment I opened the thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and put all these screws back in now and see if the hard drive powers up every time now. Okay, let's try this one more time and see if it boots again. Um, And the priority winds up. That's a great sign. Let's zoom back out. And there goes the hard drive. That's bad sounds. Yep, the hard drive failed to move its heads. This might be the thing where the drive heads are stuck in glue or something, or maybe I just over tightened them. I'll wait till this spins all the way down. The good thing is, this means the RAM is seated properly and working okay. The computer seems to be okay. It's certainly booting the operating system. I'm just not getting any video. Yeah, I think that's the end of that drive. I have that external SC drive, so I could probably boot off of that. And I have the um, floppy emu, and I can boot off that for sure. So, it'll certainly make it a quieter computer if I don't have this thing wailing away inside. I don't know why the drive's not even trying to boot now. I really pissed it off. Oh well, that's kind of what I assumed would happen. And I'll pop it open and have a look around inside again. Hold the lid off and it seems to be booting again. So, that's cool. It's working, the monitor's not coming up quite right, and it's black and white. Sadly, I didn't record any more video while I had this LCD sort of working. I spent a good 20 minutes booted up and fiddling around with the original hard drive with this LCD all wigged out like this. I assumed I just needed to play with jumpers on the VGA adapter some more, and I'd finally have this nailed down. Alas, that was not the case. In fact, this was the only time I ever got any of my LCDs to work at all. It never came up again. This was a fluke glitch where the monitor assumed the computer was driving the LCD at 75 Hz rather than the 67 Hz it actually drives it at, as well as thinking it was running at double the resolution it was actually running at. 
Perhaps that's why the bottom half of the screen was mostly noise. I spent a great deal of time researching the jumpers on that VGA adapter and trying various combos. As you'll see in the next clip, I also installed a new battery, as some posts said that they had trouble getting video until they put in a good battery. Finally, faced with needing it to buy a very specific model of LCD that would mostly work, I decided to just get the period correct CRT, the best CRT made for this computer in that era. Anyways, let's get back to the video now. So I went to Batteries Plus and I got a one half AA lithium battery. And we'll just pop this cover open. You can see a positive here, positive on the battery, so we'll drop it in the right polarity. There we go. Put the little cover back on. clip on one side might be missing. Nope. Okay, well, whatever. It's in, and it's happy. So, there we go. How about a unboxing? It's exactly what it says it is. These crazy people. I paid extra for a monitor that was in the original box. I didn't expect them to ship the actual box without, like, wrapping it inside of another box. Kind of rough on 40 year 30 year old cardboard to be shipping it through the mail but at least i know the monitor was packaged well this is uh apple's original packaging so this is how they intended the crp to be shipped okay, i'm trying not to damage the box with my knife okay packaging slip and here's the crt a good old trick for getting these out of the box is to flip the box over lift the box off the monitor. There we go. Oh, this is not the original styrofoam. It's clear that they modified this to fit, but I'm okay with it. Um, it's awfully close for being modified. I mean, maybe, maybe it just wasn't intended to have the foot on it. The only thing it's missing is like user's manuals or something. Okay, so we've got the swivel base. This is the 14 inch Apple Color Plus display. So there we go. Now let's hook it into my Mac 2 CI and see if it works. Because everything I've read online says it won't, which is unfortunate. All right, it's plugged in and turned on. It normally comes with this nice pass through cable. You plug this into the monitor, and you plug this into the power supply, and then when you turn on the Mac, it automatically turns on the monitor. But since I've replaced the power supply in here with an ATX one, that pass-through switching thing doesn't work. In fact, switching in general doesn't work right now. I have to build a circuit to do that, and I think I have to repair some stuff on the 2CI motherboard that I haven't repaired yet. So for now, the monitor is just on. Okay, I just heard the monitor wake up with the computer, so that's cool. Oh, there is a power switch on the front. There we go. And brighten this up. Hard drive spun up properly, that's good. That took a lot of work to do. Okay, the brightness control is kind of broken. Oh, there we go. Got something on the screen. I got a mouse arrow, that's a good sign. Oh, and they said it wouldn't work. That looks like it's working to me. I turned the brightness back down because uh, I've got it too high. Uh-oh, it's not like in my heart. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go um, on my floppy emu. I'm going to go Macintosh disks and system disks. And let's just go 7 point. Tools, okay. So we're going to go system 7, 7.5 installer. There we go. Install disk 1. All right, Happy Mac has appeared because I put in a disc. Yeah, yeah, sweet. This monitor works, guys. 
I spent several days thinking, oh man, I ordered the wrong monitor. I was trying to order the best monitor I could for this, and it turns out I did. So, floppy emu is booting, blinking away. It's the uh, only sign that it's reading. All that, and it says on the screen what it's doing. So, <coughs> I can put this into hard drive emulation mode in the future, and then it'll just boot up a whole operating system. But for now, this is what I'm going to do. I guess I've uh, damaged my hard drive enough it doesn't want to boot off the hard drive anymore. Which is not terribly surprising. Oh, oh boy. Booting off a floppy disk is never fast, even when it's a fake floppy disk. I want to see some color on this display is what I'm hoping for. Got some positioning knobs. There's that one. And I can position that. <laughs> Some little styrofoam stuck to the glass. It's a really nice looking monitor, actually. All right. There we go. So you can see the refresh on the camera. That's just normal CRTs. So <clears throat> um, it's working. We've booted up. And it's still only in black and white. Easy install. Destination disk. Um, so. This is not what I'm looking for. I'm going to see if I can switch this to hard drive mode. All right. Let's see if it boots up off this now. Um, I need the reset. See some of these on eBay have buttons on the front, and this one doesn't. Half of them don't, so. Are we booting or is that a question mark? Looks like a question mark. System 3.2 disk. Turn off computer. Ay, ay, ay. Come on. Back up. Hard disk MU. Hard disk 3.2. Oh, it doesn't like that. Startup disk save. Turn off computer. Oh, the handle up. If only had a power button that worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's happy about something. No, uh, it seems to be, um, get on the right side this time. It seems to be booting off the hard disk. Yep, hard disk 6.08. Or is it booting off the internal drive? I don't know. It says, oh, the zoo, there's the internal hard drive, cool. So maybe it would have booted off the uh, original hard drive, or maybe I have. So let's go. Control panel. Yeah, I'm definitely off the MU right now because it's blinking away and the hard drive's not. Um, monitors. We want color. 256. Oh, yes, it just got darker, but it works. I see all the colors down here. Let's see about 16 colors. Okay, it's not so dark. So maybe the 256 mode is a um, frequency it doesn't like. I'm happy with 16 colors. I, I get the color Apple logo. Let's try 256 again. Yeah, the color Apple logo up there looks goofy. Something's not right. So there's 16. Cool. So let me get a picture of this for the guys in the forum who uh, 
are linking a website that's not even online anymore and has bad information in it. Okay, it's booting off the internal drive this time. Oh, look, color logo. Yay! Yep, internal drive is working. <laughs> the internal drive I pulled the lid off of and I manually brought it to life. Rebuilding the desktop file. That doesn't sound good. Already got some drive corruption going on. Updating disk for new system software. Interesting. And now it's doing the floppy MU. Oh, it's rebuilding that too. That's less than ideal. All right, we're back on the zoo. Ooh, okay, so we got a lot of apps here. We got Microsoft Word. I hook up my actual SC20 to this thing. Um, it's got uh, Adobe Photoshop, and I believe it needs System 7 to work, so, because it won't run on my SE. Maybe it needs 7.5, I don't recall exactly. So, and about Microsoft Word. So this is 5.0 from 1991. Cool. Free copy of Microsoft Word. I like it. Close that. This looks nice and fast. About this Mac. So it's currently 7.0.1. I'm going to update that to 7.53. And uh, at 20 megs of RAM, I can always upgrade that to whatever it was max, like 64 or 32 or something. Crazy large amount for this old computer. Um, so. Cool. So that system software is using 13k of 13 megs of my RAM. So that 20 megs is uh, getting eaten up pretty fast. Maybe I do need more RAM. Special. Sweet. Look at all those colors. Very nice. Hot. There we go. We got a red apple over here. Oh, look at that label. We're going to do uh, a blue hard drive there. And we'll label the trash. Come on. Give the trash a nice green label like Oscar the Grinch or whatever that was. Yeah, what are these buttons up here? Okay. Hide finder, hide others. Oh, this is our like task switcher. Microsoft Word's still running. Just like Mac. Resume.banking. Interesting. Let's see what they were working on recently. Oh, please locate. Nope. Cancel. There's no like documents folder or anything. Hey, applications. Teleport. Looked like they had um, uh, AOL on here. Global Village Z Term. We got Z Term stuff here, which won't run without a, um, a modem. And then Teleport Accessories. America Online. There it is. AOL. Global Village Platinum. Nope. Uh, whatever. Interesting. Applications. Microsoft Word, Mac Paint, Teach Text. Let's love Mac Paint. Oh, Capital Management. Let's see if that'll show that again. Um, about Mac Paint. Nope, doesn't say. Memory available, 156K. Yeah, I'd say I'm out of RAM. Oh boy, howdy. Let's see, is Word still running? Yeah, let's close Word. File, quit. File, um, about Mac Paint. 156K, I think that's what I just said before. Anyways, three, three, cool.
Cool. Okay. Nope. Sound seems to be working. Yep, I need a Ethernet card for this thing next. Cool. All right, that's where we're going to end it for the week. The original hard drive continues to come and go. Along with being too small, I have decided to just replace it. So come back next week. We'll get started on doing some upgrades to this machine. Remember to like and subscribe. And please lodge any complaints about my comments being disabled with YouTube, as they've disabled them permanently. Leave comments on the Uniclocker page at Facebook until YouTube comes to their senses.